Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be putting some new components in one of my ESXi hosts. Right now it's got a run-of-the-mill motherboard in it with a Xeon processor and 16 gig of RAM. And over here we've got a new Supermicro motherboard for the ESXi host. Dual gigabit, matching CPU, and more importantly, IPMI. I also got 16 more gigs of RAM to bring the total count to 32 gigs. Also have a 16 gig USB flash drive that's going to sit internal to the motherboard and ESXi is going to boot off of it until we get auto deploy working. So let's go ahead, shut this guy down. Patient is unconscious. Brain box is back in. Well, it ain't pretty, but it works. And now for the final piece. Boot disk. Boot disk. Okay, now let's plug her in. Let's see if we can get her to chooch. Choo -choo. Blinking lights are good. IPMI works. Let's go ahead and power on. What? Shit. Those are all good noises, I assume. Yep. Yep, all good noises. Well, so much for my value select craptastic RAM. Five short beeps and one long beep. No memory detected. Okay, so I reached into my computer graveyard and yanked out a couple memory modules here. I got the correct stuff coming in the mail right now, but rookie mistake, man. I didn't check the memory matrix and I totally disregarded the fact that it needed unbuffered memory. So, uh, yeah, I was just a little too excited to get my parts and they sat in my shopping cart for a couple days and I forgot to make sure that my past self was correct and I screwed my future self. So we're going to go ahead and throw a couple of these in and see if we can't get a chooch. Alright, memory module one. Ready? Alright. No memory. Uh, module 2. I should mention that these are all uh, ECC memory. I think most of them are registered. So I'm not sure we're going to be able to get this thing to power on in the spare memory here because it's not unbuffered. The motherboard's expecting you dim, so this is pretty much futile, but what the hell. Fire in the hole. No dice. Alright, last memory module. Not uh, high hopes for this one either, but let's give it a try. What's the definition of madness again? Fire in the hole. Lovely. Alright, alright. Alright, so, goes to show you. Can't cheat for UDIM. Must be unbuffered ECC memory. None of this good registered crap. In fact, DDR3 1066 and 1333 UDIM required with a D. But my simple self decided to order some non-server, non-ECC memory for it, thinking it would match my other craptacular Ace Rock motherboard that was in here before. Garbage. Got the right stuff coming in the mail. the memory matrix. Don't be a scrub. Alright, let's go ahead and throw the memory in now. Alright, one last time. Money. I'm going to go ahead and connect the uh, IPMI port and the Ethernet port, so I'm going to go ahead and power up and install ESXi. IPMI works. And again, power it on. Good stuff. Good stuff. Alright, let's go ahead and install ESXi. The best part about IPMI and other remote management systems is that you can remotely mount media. Okay, now we're over on the computer and this should be much easier to see. Like I said earlier, we're going to go ahead and mount an ISO to this. 
should be familiar to anyone that has used something like an HP ILO or um, Dell iDRAC or whatever the hell they call it. Let's go ahead and mount up our ESXi image uh, plugin. VM plugin, okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and reboot this thing. And hopefully we can get it to boot from the CD, which we have virtually mounted over the network. There we go, here's our ESXi installer. Let's go ahead and kick it off. Boot. And it's gonna take a couple minutes, so I'm not gonna make you wait through it. So at this point, the installer has loaded almost everything into memory and it's going ahead and loading the rest of its modules before the installer starts. All right, and here is the ESXi 6.0 installer. Let's go ahead and continue, accept the license agreement. Now it's gonna scan for available devices, meaning where the heck are we gonna install this? And if you'll remember, we're gonna install it on the SanDisk Ultra Fit whatever, our 16 gig flash drive that we went ahead and threw into the motherboard. So let's go ahead, select that. You have selected the disk that contains at least one partition with existing data. If you continue, data will be overwritten. That is okay with me. US default, super secret, root password, scanning system, confirm install. Disk will be repartitioned, blah, 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 blah. Good, yes, F11 to install. And now begins the second boring part. So I'll go ahead and rejoin you guys again once this is finished. Almost. Installation complete. Evaluation mode, blah de blah. Move the installation disk before rebooting. All right, and then reboot to start using ESXi. So we can easily do that by going to virtual storage, selecting our CD-ROM and plug out. Okay, reboot. Now for the third boring part. Looks like it's booting off the appropriate boot media meaning the internal flash drive. Looks like it's loading its modules now, and once it's complete, it's gonna ask us for some host name, IP information, and other stuff to configure this as an ESXi server. All right, so it's loaded all of its modules, and it's giving us a couple of options here. It tells us that it picked up a DHCP address, uh, IPv4, as well as IPv6, it looks like. It gives us some basic information about what it's running, and it says, customize system. F2, virtual keyboard, there we go, F2. This is the password you entered during the installation, and this will bring us to a customization screen. So we don't wanna change the password, but we do wanna configure its management network, meaning this is the host address of this ESXi host. It's going, it's actually running on the first NIC, which is okay. And it doesn't have a VLAN set, which means it's using the native VLAN on the switch, which is okay. And we'd like to set a static IPv4 address, rather spacebar to select. Set the address, which I believe is going to be eight. Subnet's good, gateway's good, okay. DNS configuration, let's go ahead and punch in our primary and secondary. DNS servers and the host name is going to be, well, we're simply gonna call this ESXi01. Uh, looks like we like everything here, so we're gonna go ahead and exit. So it's gonna ask us if we wanna save and it will restart the management network. Yes, that's okay. And now we should be able to hit the host on this address here using vSphere. So let's do that now. 192.168.0.8, username, super secret password. Good, ignore. And here's our host. License will expire in 60 days. You can verify by looking at the summary. We can see our model here. Manufacturer, super micro, license information. We jump down to DNS and routing. We can see that the name we gave it, ESXi01, so there we have it. We're gonna go ahead and join it to our vCenter server and create a cluster out of it in the next video. Thank you guys for joining me. And as always, if you have any questions or would like to see anything else related to these builds or 
lab or whatever the hell else that I got going on, just leave me a comment and let me know. See you guys in the next video. Well, lesson learned. Let us never speak of this again.